name is Teresa Angoy. I'm 11 years old. Two years. I'm not two years and I have diabetes and I'm continuing living. My name is Teresa Gugi. I got diabetes in 2005 when I was in class 5. My name is Jean Moloni Kibodo. I'm a patient who has been living with the diabetes. This is now my 10th year. Mi naitwa Ruben Maboko. Mimi mwenyewe nina nina condition hiyo ya diabetes. In the last 15 years, diabetes has been identified as the fastest growing non-communicable disease in Kenya. Latest statistics indicate that 10% of the Kenyan population is diabetic. Diabetes has long been associated with old age and affluence. Simply, diabetes has been viewed as a status quo disease. Sadly, this is not the case. Diabetes has become a major concern for many health workers and patients alike since it is now affecting the old, young, poor, rich, male and female regardless of their social economic status. Diabetes is not a complicated disease if picked early. It only comes complex when it has complications. Diabetes is not a, like a HIV and because a diabetes is not that difficult disease. Diabetes comes in two major types type 1 diabetes and type 2. We have type 1 which occurs in young children. We have type 2 which comprises over 90% of all diabetes and usually affects adults or grown-ups. Then we have that which arises during pregnancy and diabetes, the last type is the one that arises from uh, from a result of treatment with certain drugs, some, some hormones, some situations. So when you talk about diabetes, we are more worried about type 2 diabetes, which comprises over 90%, like I've said. And this diabetes which is preventable. For children, it's not preventable because it comes at a, out of a genetic composition due to exposure to some uh, autoimmune diseases. And these are things sometimes are not uh, pre preventable. But type 2 diabetes is preventable. Teenage was just setting in for young Tyrus when he was diagnosed with diabetes. I got diabetes in 2005, when I was in class 5. And then that, it came that I could not be able to run. Because I stayed for about a year without knowing which disease I'm suffering. So each, division, each hospital I was taken, they were giving me such medicine for malaria, such kind of medicine. Now they are not helping me. Now Rita, I go with the history of the family, then I, they discovered I have diabetes and it was 25.5. Uh, and then I was given insulin, but I was somehow I was not able to use it because every time I could go to school, I collapsed. Then I heard that there are, are people who want to see PTs, uh, or patient of diabetes below 18 years old. Then I registered. But the time, the time I was not able because my mother used the panga to look for us for food. Now I could be, not be able. But God just came. Then I go to the Ivica District Hospital. I found they have already come and they have already gone. But one of the nurse, he gave me the the fare. I go and up to Nyeri Green Greenhouse. Then I met them, but even that time, the medicine I was using, it was already expired because I was not, not able to keep it well. So the sugar was above that. And now I'm in class eight. I was, I was supposed to go to class eight, but I go back to class six. And now I'm in class eight. Meet Teresia, a standard 6, 11-year-old girl at Shalom Primary School. This was found on 1st January 2008. That's when my aunt took me to a health, health center that is in Nanyuki. That doctor has been treating me for many times. 
now when I did not know which disease I had, but my aunt knew. And now I continued. My, at that time, I did not know how to inject myself. I stayed two, 2009. I did not know, but I came to New to inject myself in 2010. <laughs> Sazili alipelea kwa hospitali, kakumwa kwa mkana kwa na diabetes. Pia bia vile ni kutakua na tunamiduga, na vile ni kutakua tunampatia shakuka. And how do we identify this uh, with the children? Some are sent from the community. Some are sent from hospitals, public hospitals, who do not have a consistent supply of insulin, but they have these needy children who cannot be able to buy, who are not able to buy insulin from the pharmacies. And so, some of the children like Teresia, who are featured in this documentary, that's how we met Teresia. From the community groups that we trained, they identified. One group identified young girls, young boys who are needy, and Teresia came in. When I wake up in the morning, I monitor my blood sugars. I, I inject myself and then take breakfast. In the, in the morning I take breakfast, I take lunch, or even I take tea. I live like other children. I want to tell even others who are also with diabetes, we continue living like others. Jane was only 27 years old when she was diagnosed with diabetes. As a young wife and mother, her life was just beginning. Jane's husband deserted her when she was diagnosed with the disease. But at the time I was uh, diagnosed that I can be diabetic, I was around 60. So I was just losing weight. Here I would like to say that when I was diagnosed to be diabetic in the hospital, my immediate person whom you are residing with, that is my husband, never gave me that support. But from my parents, that is my mother, my dad, my brothers, my sisters, the support they have given me up to date. Actually, it's only God who can bless them. There are three main techniques to manage diabetes. Basically, nutrition plays a very, very big role in terms of diabetes management. That counts to about 35 to 40 percent of diabetes management, whereas physical activity and education accounts for about 55% and then uh, drug management takes about 10%. One of the most important aspects in lifestyle modification is what we eat. People say what you are is what you put in through that mouth, in the way of food. And for diabetic patients, it's not like we have a special diet. What you need to, uh, and what our nutritionists do, they go down to the basics, find out what you do you as a person, as an individual, what do you like eating, what do you have available. And from that, balance for that patient by giving them the options. So once you look into that, then there's no way a patient can say they don't have anything to eat. For normal or general, general rules, remember that when you are eating your food on a plate, half of your plate should contain vegetables. We divide your plate into three portions. The first portion is vegetables. The other push, a quarter of the plate is starch, and the other quarter of, of, of plate is uh, proteins. I'm supposed to take the food 30 minutes from the time I had taken my lunch or the supper. Not immediately. This is what we get from the nutritionist. While I'm at home, I usually make sure that I eat a balanced diet, but vegetables are more than the other kind of food. And that I can be able to control it. I eat also food that co contains bodybuilding food, but carbohydrates, they be little. Vegetables, they be more. Yes. Um, what we consider as an un unhealthy lifestyle that increases the risk of diabetes is what we call a sedentary life, where one does not exercise, you don't walk, you uh, hardly move about. If you're working, you sit at the office most of the day. 
you send people to get you a cup of tea, you send people to get you this document, you send people to call someone to come and listen to what you have to say. But incorporating exercise as much as possible in the lifestyle. Um, if you are to be very objective, then we say you need to walk 10,000 steps per day. Um, there are little gadgets called pedometers which one can buy and would actually measure your steps. But uh, basically, um, if you can walk uh, 30 minutes brisk walking every day, three to four days a week will significantly reduce your risk of diabetes. So who is prone to diabetes? One could be due to genetic issues. Secondary could be the way of life. The other factor is weight. If you have excessive body weight, if you are uh, overweight or you are obese, you also increase your risk of diabetes significantly. So ensuring that uh, weight is optimal, again by exercise and watching diet, um, avoiding a high load of carbohydrates in the food and eating more fruit and vegetables um, would help a lot and go a long way towards reducing the risk of diabetes. What is the government doing? In this clinic we do the diabetes sugar testing. We also do what we call the HbA1c, which gives us an average of the last three months sugar control. We also have a nutrition housed within the diabetes clinic, um, which is very key in the management of diabetic patients, uh, because nutrition counseling uh, serves a big role in the management of diabetes. In the year 2010, the Ministry of Public Health and Sanitation Division of Non-Communicable Diseases launched the National Diabetes Strategy aimed at eradicating diabetes in Kenya through a campaign dubbed Understand Diabetes and Take Control. It will take concerted efforts to eradicate diabetes in Kenya. It all starts with you. Take the first step and go for a blood sugar test. You are either affected or infected. Diabetes is our meeting point. Take the first step to eradicate diabetes. It takes five seconds to know your status. What do you want to do when you grow? I want to be a doctor. Because I could like to treat other patients as I was treated. Yes, what would you like to become? A surgeon. You want to become a surgeon? This is the work I want to do when I grow up. Diabetes doesn't pain and that is the danger. So you'll be good. by the time we are, it's paining, it's too late. Diabetes is not a life sentence and it need not be uh, a life threat. It takes five seconds to get tested for diabetes. It takes five seconds to know your status. <laughs>